kids, it is National Nurse Appreciation Week, and we have a terrific book for you today. But first, we want to sing our good morning song. Are you ready? Ready? One, two, three. Good morning, Miss Flowers class. How are you? Good morning, Miss Flowers class. How are you? How are you this special day? We're so glad you came today. Good morning, Miss Flowers class. How are you? Good morning. It is so great to see you, and we are ready to get going. Are you ready? All right, get your spots. We're ready. Kids, well, this week is National Nurses Week, and it's National Teachers Week. So we are going to spend today talking about hospital friends in honor of Nurses Week. Do you know someone who is a nurse? You do? Wow, who is it? <gasps> your mom? Oh, yeah. And your aunt? Oh, your dad? Uh-huh. And your papa? Yeah, you know lots of people. Your uncle? Your brother? Wow, you guys know a lot of nurses. Well, as I said, we're going to read this great book today. But first, I want you to tell me what part of the book this is. Yep, this is the front of the book. What part of the book is this? You're right, it is the back of the book. And the name of this book, or the title, is The Bernstein Bears Hospital Friends. Wow, look at the front, I like it. Look at all the Bernstein Bears. Wow, look at them. Let's count them. Ready? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow, twelve bears on there. Hmm. Well, the writer of this book is Mike Bernstein. Look at that. And what do we call the writer of a book? You're right, we call the writer of a book the author. So, the title of this book is Hospital Friends. There's the title page. It tells us the title, which is Hospital Friends, the Bernstein Bears Hospital Friends. It tells us the author again, who is Mike Bernstein, but there's the publishing company, Harper Festival. So the title page tells us um, more information. So let's get started. The Bear family was visiting the Bear County Hospital. Their cousin Fred had just had his tonsils taken out. They were begin bringing him a card and a balloon that said, Get well soon. On the way to his room, they passed busy doctors, nurses, and other hospital workers. Wow, look at those busy, busy people. If you can see a hospital worker, would you point to one? Yeah, it looks like this might be a nurse. This might be someone taking a meal to someone who's in the hospital. Wow, they have pretty colored clothes on too. Point to the doctor in the green jacket if you see him. Yeah, there he is right there. Cousin Fred was sitting up in his bed eating a bowl of ice cream. Aunt Min was with him. She had a bed in the corner of in the she had a bed in the corner in case she needed to stay overnight. Hiya Fred, said brother and sister. How are you feeling? Hi, said Fred. His voice was soft and raspy. My throat hurts. That's why I'm eating this. It's the only thing that feels good on my throat. Oh my, look. So cousin had to have his tonsils removed. Wow, so sometimes you might have to go to the doctor to have your tonsils removed. Hmm. 
You get ice cream here, said brother. I want to stay in the hospital too. I don't know if you can stay, said a voice behind them, but I'll give you a tour. It was Dr. Gert Grizzly, their family doctor. She was there to check on Cousin Fred. Can we really have a tour, Dr. Grizzly? asked Sister. Of course, said the doctor. This would be a good time for you to learn all about the hospital. Oh, I can't wait to hear all about the hospital. Can you? Yeah. Dr. Grizzly looked Cousin Fred over. You're doing fine, Fred, she said. I think you'll be able to go home today. Hooray, whispered Fred and went back to his ice cream. Now let's get started, said Dr. Grizzly, as they waved goodbye to Cousin Fred and Aunt Min. Wow, look, what is that? Yep, there's the balloon. Sometimes we give balloons to people to help them feel better. No, nope. but look what the doctor's doing. What is she doing? Yep, yeah, she's looking in Fred's what? In his mouth, because his tonsils are way back there at the back of his throat. Say, ah, if you look back there, you can see your tonsils. And that's why she's doing that, look. This part of the hospital is where cubs stay, explained Dr. Crisley. We try to make them comfortable. Their parents can stay with them, and there are books, toys, games, and TV. There's plenty of good food, usually more than just ice cream. Oh, wow. So, do you know what a cub is? Yeah. A cub is a baby bear or a child bear. So this is where the cubs stay. Special workers play with the cubs, read to them, and help them learn. There are even artists and musicians who teach cubs how to paint and play instruments. That looks like fun, said sister. Brother and honey nodded. Wow, look at that. Goodness. So look at all of those cubs. Wow, lots of baby bears. Hello, Bonnie, said Dr. Grizzly to a cub with a cast on her leg. Good morning, Dr. Grizzly, said Bonnie. Bonnie here has a broken bone in her leg, Dr. Grizzly explained. May we sign your cast, asked sister. Sure, said Bonnie, grinning. They signed her cast, and Honey drew a, a heart on it. Oh, look. Look there is Honey's cast. Have you ever had a cast on an arm or a leg? Did you break an arm or a leg? Yep. Yeah, look. Wow. Bonnie and her friends are going to physical therapy, said Dr. Grizzly. That's where they go to get the special exercise they need. The Bear family followed Bonnie to PT, which is physical therapy, and watched cubs working on exercise machines and doing other activities to help them grow strong and well. So look, they're learning, their, they're doing their special exercises to help them to get well. Wow. Goodness gracious. If you see a wheelchair, will you point to it? Do you see one? Yep, the wheelchair is right there. What color is it? Yep, it's pink. It is pink. When someone has broken a bone like Bonnie, said Dr. Grizzly, we often take x-rays to learn more about it. What are x-rays, asked brother. You can see for yourself, said Dr. Grizzly, showing them. There was a window onto a room with a big machine. A patient's leg was propped under it. A doctor was holding pictures from the machine up to a light. <clears throat> you could actually see the patient's bones right in the pictures. Wow, said sister. Cool, said brother. Cool, said honey. So look, there's the x-ray. Look, 
The x-ray is just a picture of someone's bones. Wow, look at that. And there is the x-ray machine, look. And sometimes if you fall and get hurt, you may have to go to the doctor or to the hospital and have an x-ray as well. But an x-ray won't hurt you. It's just a machine that takes a picture of your bones. Wow. X-rays are one way to learn about a patient, said Dr. Grizzly. But first we do exams and other things to decide what needs to be done. Sometimes there needs to be an operation. Oh, wow. Like when Cousin Fred had his tonsils taken out, asked Sister. That's right, said Dr. Grizzly. Let's see what happens before an operation. They went to a room where nurses and doctors were getting patients ready for operations. A cub was there with her mom and dad. Doctors were giving her medicine to make her comfortable and drowsy. They explained about all the other things they would do to keep her safe and make sure nothing felt bad. So look, the doctors and the nurses, there are the doctors and the nurses, and they are taking care of, look, the baby cub before they have to go into Gavin operation or to have surgery. That means something to fix something that's not working right in your body. The Bear family saw doctors and nurses washing their hands. They wore gowns, hats, and rubber gloves and were putting masks over their noses and mouths. Everyone who works with patients in an operation has to wash carefully to clean away germs, explained Dr. Grizzly. So, wow, washing your hands is super important. So, you should wash hands before you handle what? That's right, before you handle food. But also, you should wash your hands, look, before you touch a patient. So doctors and nurses wash their hands even before they put their gloves on. And look, what else are they putting on? We're seeing a lot of those lately, aren't we? Can you tell what that is? Yeah, look, it's a face mask. That's right. You wear a face mask so that you won't transfer germs whenever you cough or whenever you breathe. So the mask is going right on over her face, right over her mouth and her nose. But she can still breathe, but that helps her not to give germs or transfer germs to her patient or the baby cub. Why are they wearing masks and all that other stuff, asked Sister. That's to protect against germs, too, said Dr. Grizzly. Even after washing, we all have germs that can make a patient sick. Wow. So you wash your hands really well, but also doctors and nurses still have to wear lots of masks and gowns to help their patient from getting more sick than they are. Wow. I'm sure glad. Look at all those bubbles she's making as she washes her hands. We saw some bubbles earlier in the week, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Where do patients go after an operation, asked Brother. To recovery, said Dr. Grizzly, taking them into a room where more patients were being cared for. Dr. Grizzly pointed out a plastic bag with tubes attached. That's an IV, she said. It gives patients liquids to keep them healthy. Wow, look, that's the IV. See? And sometimes that goes right in your hand, or it might go in your arm, so that you can have liquids that have medicine in them, to help make you healthy again. Some of the patients were asleep. One cub was just waking up. Were they taking naps, asked sister? Uh, not exactly, said Dr. Grizzly. 
When cubs have an operation, there are doctors and nurses who help them fall asleep and stay safe until they wake up with their moms and dads. Oh, wow, look at that. These doctors and nurses are super busy, aren't they? So they not only take care of patients, but they help them go to sleep and they help them wake up. Yeah, that's great. When someone comes into the hospital, ask brother, where do they go first? Often, right to the emergency department, said Dr. Grizzly. That's the last stop on our tour. They pass through a waiting area for families of patients who had just arrived and greeted a nurse at a desk. This is Nurse Brown, said Dr. Grizzly. She finds out all about the patients when they first come in. So look, there's the nurse, and she's asking them lots of questions to find out all about them. She's probably going to ask their name. Yeah. She might ask, what do you think she might ask? That's right. She's probably going to ask their age. She's going to ask how old they are. Yeah, she's probably going to ask if they have any allergies. That means, are they allergic to any medicines or foods? And that just means, do they? if they take these things, will they make them sick? So she's very important. Most of the patients are sent to an exam room, said Nurse Brown. Would you like to see one? She took them to a row of small rooms with curtains. They saw a doctor listening to a cub's breathing while a nurse took his temperature and checked his heart. Wow, so when the nurse takes your temperature, she might put a thermometer. She might use a thermometer and she might put it in your mouth or under your arm to see what your body temperature is, to see if it's elevated or high in case you have a fever. Wow. So she took his temperature and checked his heart. So she might use a stethoscope for that. We'll use one of those in a few minutes. After patients are examined, explained Nurse Brown, they sometimes go for more tests or treatment. How do all of these patients get to the hospital anyway, asked Sister. When folks need to go to the hospital in a hurry, said Nurse Brown, taking them outside, she showed them an ambulance. An ambulance will rush them right here. Emergency workers can even give care and medicine in the ambulance while it's on its way. Wow, look at that ambulance. Yep, look at that. And there are the paramedics or the EMTs who are taking care of the patient. Sometimes, Dr. Grizzly told them, Patients are brought even faster or from far away in a special helicopter that lands right on the hospital roof. Wow, said the cubs. Oh my, said Mama, holding her head in the breeze. Wow, said Papa. Oh my, if you see the helicopter, point to it. That's right, there it is. What color is it? Yes. It is orange. You're right. You are right. So sometimes if someone has to be brought to the hospital in a big hurry, they might bring them in a helicopter. Now our hospital tour is done, said Dr. Grizzly. I hope you enjoyed learning about the hospital as much as I enjoyed showing it to you. Yes, we did, said the Bear family. Thank you, Dr. Grizzly. Thank you indeed, doctor, said Mama. We've met so many new friends here today. The doctors, the nurses, and everyone else who works hard to make the hospital a special place. And we've learned that when we come to the hospital, our hospital friends will take good care of us all. Wow, look at that. What a great book. Yeah, so hospital friends is just about what? Yeah, it's about all the people who work in the hospital who work together to help their patients or their baby cubs or their grown-up cubs or grown-up people or babies or children 
to get better. We need those special people to be able to take good care of us. So, it looks like our friend Abner here is not feeling very well. So, in just a moment, we're going to talk about what we can do to maybe figure out what's wrong with Abner today. So, we were talking about our book, The Bernstein Bears Hospital Friends, because today is Nurses Day. Actually, yesterday was Nurses Day. This is Nurse Appreciation Week. So, we are going to first talk about um, a few American Sign Language words that would help us to be able to use our hands to be able to communicate if we weren't feeling well. Because some people communicate using their hands all the time because they're unable to use words. So let's start with how about one that we learned the last time, which was how are you? Are you ready? See? Ready? Okay. So how are you? Let's do it again. You ready? How are you? Yep. How are you? Yeah, how are you? So then you could say, I am fine. Remember we learned that last week? I am fine. Let's try that again. You ready? I, point to yourself, I am fine. So use your forefinger first. I, point to yourself, am fine. Then use your thumb. I am fine. Good job. Okay. Or you could just say, I'm good. I'm good. So, I am good. I, point to yourself. Use your finger. I am good. Good job. Very good. Let's try it one more time. You, we're going to say, I'm good. So, I am good. I am good. So, see, if you didn't have the words to say, you could use your hands to say, I am fine. Or, I am good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now let's try pain or, or something hurts. So pain means something hurts. So if the doctor says, what's the matter? You could say, so you put your fingers point, kind of pointing toward one another and then you just, that means it hurts. Something hurts. Just twist your wrist. Hurts. Can you do that? So from the side. Okay, you try it. So pain means. So right here from your wrist, move your wrist. Point your fingers together. It hurts. It hurts. You try it. Ready? Good. It hurts. Good job. Very good. Okay, so if we wanted to say that our tummy aches or our tummy hurts, we would do that, but we would just do it right in front of our tummy. So we're going to, instead of having our hands up here to say something hurts, we want to show that our tummy hurts. So put it right down here by your tummy. Yep, there's your tummy. Yep, right down a little lower. Yep, there's your tummy. Now go. So if he says, what hurts, you could say, and he would know right here, it's your tummy that hurts. So try it one more time. You try it with me. So your tummy hurts. Good job. Very good. Okay. So if our head was hurting, oh my, does your head ever hurt? Mine does too sometimes. So... We know that pain means this. 
So we just move it up here by our head and we would just go. And that would let the nurse or the doctor know that our head hurts right up here by your head. Same motion. You're just moving your hands in opposite directions and your, and your fingers are kind of, your index fingers are just moving over one another. So hurts. So your head hurts. If you're doing it up here, you try it. Good. That means your head hurts. If you're doing it down here, what does that mean? That's right. It means you have a tummy ache. So headache, you do it. Yes. And then tummy ache. Do it together. Right. Now you do it. Good job. Very good. Okay. So, um, let's see. Sick. If we just want to say, oh, I, I just feel sick. I just feel sick. So you would take your middle finger on this hand. See? You put it on your forehead. And the middle finger from your other hand like this. And you'd go. See? So you're going to tap your head with your middle finger while you're tapping your tummy with the other middle finger. Means I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Feel sick. Okay, you try it. Good job. Let's try it together. Thumb, uh, middle finger on your forehead. Middle finger on your tummy. I'm sick. I'm sick. Feel sick. Good job. Very good. All right, and the last one we're going to um, do is throw up. Oh, do you ever feel like you need to throw up? Oh, it's awful, isn't it? But sometimes it happens. So throw up, Abner, sit right here. So throw up would just be like this. Put your thumb towards your mouth, just like this. Your other hand, just like this. Open them up, just like this. So you have your hand, point your thumb at your mouth, open it. Then your other hand, just like this, and you would go like it's coming out. See? Throw up. Throw up. Throw up. Throw up. Okay, can you try it? Very good. Thumb pointing at your mouth. Hand open. Other hand right here. Throw up. Throw up. So those are just some ways that we can use some sign language to say some things that we need to say if we aren't feeling very well. So as we talked about earlier in our book, sometimes children have to go to the hospital or to the doctor because they're sick. Sometimes they have to go to have operations to have their tonsils removed or maybe to have some tubes in their ears because their ears keep hurting and they keep having ear infections. And the nurse takes good care of them by getting them all ready for their surgery or for the doctor to come in and see them. Um, but always the nurse first washes her hands really, really well before she um, touches the patient. So I've already washed my hands really, really well. And then after she washes her hands, really, really well, then she puts on her gloves. Look at there. Not scary at all. Look what color are my gloves. Yeah, my gloves are blue. And what am I putting my gloves on? What am I putting them on? That's right. I'm putting them on my hands. Yeah. And do you know why I'm putting these gloves on? You said it, you're right. So that I won't spread germs to Abner because he's already sick. So I don't want him to get any more germs, do I? So sometimes Abner might be sick and have to go to the doctor. So the nurse might have to listen to his heart. But sometimes Abner doesn't feel sick and he has to go to the doctor just to get a checkup or to get his checkup so that he can go to school. Did you know that you're gonna have to get a checkup so that you can go to school? 
Yeah, because they want to know that you're well when you start to school. So, you may have to let the nurse or the doctor listen to your heart. So, remember like in our Mother's Day book, oh, that's tomorrow. I gave it away. But our heart is right here on the left side of our chest. So, I'm just going to listen to Abner's heart. You sound good, Abner. So, I would just listen to his heart rate. Yeah, and I would just write that right down for the doctor if I were his nurse so that the doctor would know what Abner's heart rate is. The next thing that I might do is I might have to look in Abner's ears. Ooh, this, yeah, would be an otoscope so that I could look in his ears to see if they had any redness so that I could tell the doctor, hey, be sure and look in Abner's ears because he's been complaining about his ears hurting. All right, so the next thing that we might have to do is we might just have to weigh Abner because we want to know how heavy Abner is. Okay, Abner, stand right there so we can weigh you. Be very still. Oh, my goodness, Abner, you're a heavy one. Goodness, Abner weighs 40 pounds. Wow, he's very heavy. So we would write that down as well for the doctor. So sometimes Abner might be feeling kind of bad. So the nurse might have to give Abner some medicine. And medicine might just be a liquid like this. Look at that. Yep, and we would just help Abner take his medicine. Oh, good boy, Abner. Wow, Abner took all his medicine like a big boy. Goodness, you are a big boy. But we also may have to take Abner's temperature. So we would use a thermometer. A thermometer. The thermometer has numbers on it, and it will just tell us if Abner's body temperature is high. High would mean that he had a fever, so that would mean he was sick. So let's just, we can use it under his arm. Yeah. We're just going to hold it right here under his arm. See there? Abner, do you have a fever? Oh, no. Abner doesn't have a fever. Thank goodness. Or Abner might have to hold it in his mouth under his tongue. Abner, hold it there under your tongue. Very good, boy. Oh, yeah. Abner does not have a fever. Very good. So he doesn't. Sometimes there are thermometers that you can just put on someone's forehead. And you could put it right there and look to see if there was a fever. Nope. Abner does not have a fever. His temperature is 98.6. Thank goodness. Abner, I'm so glad you're not sick. But sometimes Abner may have a scratch or a, or a big um, scrape. Um, and sometimes they may have to put a Band-Aid on it. Or if it's time for Abner to get his school checkup, Abner may have to get some shots before he comes to school. And you know what? Everybody has to get their immunizations. Sometimes they're called vaccines. But they're just your shots. They have medicine in the syringe. And the doctor just gives them either in your arm, usually in your leg, or maybe right back here in your behind, where you, they just put the medicine right in there. Did that hurt, Abner? No. Nope. Didn't hurt. But it's okay because you have to have those to be able to go to school so that you won't get sick and so that you won't make someone else sick either. So that's all that's for. And the nurse would just put a Band-Aid right on that spot where she gave you your 
injection or your shot um, for school. So these are the things that we do to check Abner out in case he's sick or in case he is just here to get a checkup in order to be able to go to school. So there's no reason to be afraid because doctors and nurses really want to take good care of you. If you get the opportunity to tell a nurse, hey, happy Nurse Appreciation Week, be sure and do that because they work really hard to make sure that you are safe and that you can get well in a very quick and a very safe way.